Now, this is the second part of the conversation which I had with Aaron. He is a staff software engineer at Google, ex software engineer at Amazon and Microsoft. In this video, we're basically going to talk about how to become a staff software engineer. What are some skills that are required to become one? People who are you know interested in becoming a staff software engineer, could you also talk about like your journey? Um, like how did you became a staff software engineer? I think there's a very technical answer to that, which is, you know, I applied for a job as one uh, and, and got it. But I, I think probably the question you're really asking is, is how do people get to that level? Um, so I think it depends where everybody's kind of coming from. Um, as I said, most places, the path to a senior engineer is pretty clear, right? Um, you start off early in your career, you become independent. Um, you know, for me, it was a lot of like when I was, you know, just starting out, I read a lot of books about design patterns. I tried to learn different languages, tried to work on different projects, just kind of flush out my skills. And at, at a certain point, it was like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm a, you know, core individual contributor at this point. Um, I'm able to, I was working in video games at the time. So it was like, if you go ask me to design a, a, a feature, um, you know, I can go do that. I'll, I'll write a design doc, I might get some feedback on it, but more or less, like, you can trust me to go and, and build it, right? Um, my path to kind of being a um, senior engineer was I started, you know, taking on some leadership roles. Uh, it started kind of small. It started as, like, I started being, a, a you know, more or less a scrum master within my team. Um, we had a little area of like uh, of gameplay in one of our video game teams, and we were working on a problem. And so I started kind of working on that and, and becoming the subject matter expert in that. And they started kind of management said, well, there's a couple engineers here. Why don't you go take a larger problem, solve this? So like, for example, uh, some video games, I built like the online experience with a small team of people. That kind of gave me some senior engineering, like leading some projects over some time. And I just kind of grew from that. Um, you know, I, I joined uh, Amazon as a senior engineer, started taking on projects that took a year or two, and started just learning how to do the things that are you know different as a staff engineer, learning how to influence other teams, learning how to present to a director or a VP, uh, learning what's important to the business, um, learning um, how to how to convince other senior engineers um, how to work on something, right? How to make good trade-offs, um, all of those things. And eventually what ended up happening was, you know, I started taking on these larger projects. People just started giving me these, these things where it was like, well, you need different groups to work together. How about you, you know, in, in one of my cases, it was like, how about you mentor somebody to take over as like the senior engineer on, on the team you're on now and um, start uh, kind of mentoring them and then start working on this other area. And sooner or later, I became kind of like a tech lead over that whole space. That was pretty much my path to, you know, learning the skills. Um, from that point, it's just a matter of, uh, you know, people either do one of two things, they either um, do a, you know, showcase project or something like that and get management buy-in and go through whatever committees are, are in the company and, and get promoted as a staff or principal engineer. In my case, um, I just found it easier to go apply to another company and, you know, I could interview and talk about all the things I had done. I had uh, done all the skills. So, you know, for me, it was just, okay, they, they were willing to hire me in at that level. And so I became one. And then my next question is, you know, what are some of the requirements for being a staff software engineer, and you already talked about this, I think, um, you know, taking on more responsibilities and establish relationship with, you know, other uh, people. So could you also, do you have anything else to add on, on uh, the requirements for being a staff software engineer? Um, yeah, I mean, I, it's, it's hard to talk about this because each company has a slightly different view of what they take it uh, as. You can see that if you go to somewhere like levels.fyi, um, they each, some companies have kind of um, larger scopes, some don't. Some companies, uh, particularly startups, may not have grown big enough that they have even really thought about it. I think the general requirements are, are kind of the main ones I talked about, like impact is going to be the thing, right? Um, it's no longer good enough to just 
do what you're told or to solve problems where somebody says this is a problem to go solve. Um, you have to be willing to go figure out what the problems are. Um, you know, I one of my first staff like projects was launching a new AWS service. Um, I ended up pitching it um, to a director uh, and and then pitching it through the executives with a team of people and building prototypes and things like that. And you know, nobody told me go do that. Um, it was something I just chose to do. Not everybody's going to do a staff project like that to get to the next level. There's certainly I've seen people who have been within teams to do it, but in almost all cases, you, you're going to have to take risks, larger risks. You're going to have to learn how um, to work with people. Um, you're going to have to, you know, not be a jerk. Uh, it's, it's a part of it. Right? You have to be a, the kind of person people want to approach. That people are going to see you as an expert, somebody to come talk to. Um, you're going to have to be technically strong. Right? Uh, you know, um, that's that's necessary but insufficient. But really, the, the the thing that changes in the role is like you're you're now a leader of leaders. Um, so your your leadership and your your vision and um, your ability to tolerate the risks and, and navigate the organizations, all of that is um, you have to be able to do to have impact. And also another question is, you know, what are some advice that you have for people who are, you know, becoming a staff software engineer, or maybe they're currently a senior developer or SD2? Like, what are some advice young developers? Well, I think I think it'll be different for younger versus older ones. Um, I think if you're just starting out, um, my my first thing would be don't worry about it too much. Um, you know, there's there's uh, <laughs> Amazon. They used to say there's no compression algorithm for success. Um, you need just so much experience to be a staff engineer. Um, you know, I, I think it was uh, Malcolm Gladwell in his book Outliers talks about like the so-called ten thousand hour rule. And the idea of this is that you need to do focused practice on something to be world class at anything. And the exact amount of time varies, but you'll find the same thing is true, right? Like you don't become a, a, a commercial pilot without so much flight hours. You don't become a, a concert level um, violinist without so much practice. Uh, and the same thing is true of, of engineering, right? When you first start out, um, I recommend focused practice in the sense of like, um, deliberately learning new techniques, right? It's really easy to be in your comfort zone and just do whatever you need to do in the job, but like what will help you grow is um, exploring different ideas, learn different programming languages because they'll make you think in different ways, learn different technologies, um, be open-minded, be willing to be a beginner to, to get experience, get feedback from other people and work on kind of building up your skills. Once you're really good at that, once you're you know pretty solid at Kind of like the day-to-day -day engineering like you can get code you can build out a feature your, your code reviews a routine you can design things then it's about the leadership right um, start being the subject matter expert start being the person people want to talk to start figuring out how to lead projects mentally shift yourself from i have a manager and my manager tells me what to do to a my manager and i are peers and i'm trying to figure out the technology and they're trying to figure out um, you know, the, the management aspects and we have to work together and their goals are my goals and I'm successful when the team is successful. Um, all of that, practicing that, practicing your system design skills, all of that gets you to senior engineer. As you go to staff, then it's just a lot more of that. It's the, the big transition is going to be you, you can't be as prescriptive anymore. You're going to have to learn more subtle ways of influencing senior engineers aren't necessarily going to want to be told, like, this is exactly what you should do and go do it, right? Um, so you're going to have to learn how to mentor them. You're going to have to learn the politics. You're going to have to learn how to deal with when, you know, there's an escalation and you're the person who has to resolve it between the teams. And that's just practice, right? Take on those projects. Take on those challenges that stretch you. Um, that's the things that get there. If, if you focus too much on the title as opposed to your own individual growth, it's going to be really hard to get to those levels. But if you focus on, hey, how do I do my best work? How do I take the feedback that I'm hearing from teams? How do I um, make a bigger impact? How do I work on things that matter? Um, if you keep doing that and you're open to the process, 
then it just becomes a point of which, you know, you have enough experience and let's say, all right, am I doing this through my company? Am I writing up a promo doc? Am I pushing it through the org or should I go, you know, um, leak code and apply somewhere? Well, that's all the question that I have um, for Aaron. Thank you very much for being on the show. Yeah, it was, uh, it was a pleasure. Now, before I end this video, if you find this content helpful, please consider subscribe and like this content.